Hello and welcome to my channel on human design. Today I want to look at generators and manifesting generators. And I want to talk about how the life can be with a generator or a manifesting generator. The generators, and I'll talk about them generally with the word generator, including both, generators have a fixed sacral. They have their own life force. And they are designed to make decisions based on their response. I mean, all well and good. You know this. And I want to just bring this to your attention, that human beings are basically receptive. Ra talked about this. He talked about the fact that most people think that they've um, that we're creative beings. We're actually receptive. Artists have to wait for the muse to come through them. And we have to wait for the genius ideas to come through. We receive them and then we can talk about them, then we can show them. So receptivity and the fact that we are in the West anyway, we are really detached from the natural world, at least most people are. So we are already living in a world that is unnatural to the way that we are designed. So that's the first thing. The second thing is the nature of response. Response is something that comes out of one. It's an energy that moves through one. It goes towards something if it's positive, that, that shrinks away if it's not for them. Often with a sound, not in every case. If you've just got the 34th gate in the sacral, only that, then you won't make a sound, but you'll feel, still feel the energy moving through you. So it's an energetic response to what comes towards you. Now, it would be wonderful if we had that space and we were able to respond according to who we are. But we've been conditioned. We've all been conditioned. So often we don't get a response from people. We get a reaction. We get a reaction. You know, the, and, and the reaction could be seen because it's it's overboard, like everything in the not self behavior. It is overblown in some way. So a reaction is often repetitive and it is often overblown. It is often, you know, a whole drama about something that was actually very minor. But because of the pain from the past that you can't let go of, you react overwhelmingly to that which certainly doesn't lead to a happy life. So, you know, I was driving around town the other day and, and just seeing the misery on people's faces. There aren't many happy people out there, or at least they don't show their happiness. It's not a way to live in reaction based on conditioning that has got you in its grip, that you've actually allowed to come into your life and you've adapted to something that is unnatural to you. You're overreactive to the things that you haven't dealt with. So when you see yourself reacting as a generator, there's work to be done, your work to be done. Look at it. It's, otherwise, you just keep repeating it. And when you keep repeating it, it sets up um, an uncomfortable frequency around you. When you're responding, it's not uncomfortable. When you're responding, it's fine. But you're responding to someone and they take it too personally and suddenly you're in a whole awkward emotional nonsense because you're not you and they're not them. So we're living in a not-self world. It is your ability as a generator to respond that enables you to take correct decisions. If you ignore your response because of this, because of that, you know, because of the way they're, they're going to think about you, because of the, the circumstances, whatever it may be, you're not going to be living your life. So when a natural response comes out, it brings something else to us. Firstly, you have to recognize it's a response. And once you get used to it, once you start tuning into your sacral responses, it feels correct, it's truthful. There's a natural response. There's someone asks you, you know, will you do this? And you go, mm, you don't want to do it. 
Well, what does that lead to? That leads to you either saying it, you're not into it and facing the consequences and standing in your own truth or going along with it and feeling uncomfortable and using your energy in a way that it doesn't want to be used. So there is not only a response, there is a responsibility that you have to yourself to stay in alignment with your response, no matter what, no matter what. And that's when things start changing, when people begin to take responsibility for their own truth, and too few do. So when you're around people that are in human design, when someone says, do you want to do this? And you go, mm, no, rather than taking offense, rather than uh, feeling rejected, they go, OK, OK, yeah, you're not into it right now. People will begin to accept your response once you accept your response and take responsibility for it. A lot of the games begin to fall away then. Now, in an ideal world, that's what would happen, and it does happen slowly. But one of the things that's also needed is for you to get the space away from others where you can decondition from all the other auras. Now, in creating space, that might mean getting up earlier, having some quiet time alone. It may be going for a walk, getting something in your day that will take you away from others so that you can begin to see how you are in your own aura and then what happens when you're with other auras. Uh, it's, it's about taking responsibility for your own life. And if you don't, no one else is going to. Uh, we're, we're brought up in a way where we're looking to our elders. We're looking to be supported by the elders when we are when we are very young. And many people go through life looking for others in order to look after them. Well, you've got to take responsibility for yourself. Not all of you have the 50th gate. Not all of you have the awareness of uh, what it is to be responsible. So a lot of you aren't responsible, but <laughs> you can take responsibility for your own life because it makes the life better. So if you're responding correctly and other people accept that, life gets much easier pretty quickly. It also helps being a generator and really being very familiar with your own response um, I mean, so many different languages are in the sacral. It's really fascinating. But if you're happy in your own response, if you're tuning into your own response, which is really the work to be done, and you're acting upon that response, and people are allowing you to do that, everything begins to calm down. When you're with other people, and they are upset about something, and you're just yourself, it helps them to be themselves too. The other thing is when you're with other generators, you can help them because of your knowledge of human design. When you're speaking to them and you say something and, you know, you see a response, but they deny it. You can see that or they you, you see no response and they go, yeah, OK, and it's not an OK. You can back off. You're watching them to see does their life force respond to want to do what you want them to do or not? And if not, then leave them alone. Leave them in their own space. It's a great gift you can give to the other to be able to recognize their response and allow that, you know, rather than fighting with them and trying to force them. Or It's all about trying to avoid force from the outside, much better than trying to persuade them and force them to do something you've seen that they haven't responded to. I mean, that's just ugly. You don't want to really have uh, relationships in your life where you're forcing them to do something. It just, you know, it's awful. And the final thing I want to look at uh, with generators today is the fact that you are walking around with a powerful life force in you. So the other thing is to be aware of how you are affecting other people. How your life force, if your life force isn't moving well, then you're going to be carrying that frustration around with you. And you bring that into the room. And let's say you've got three or four open sacral people there. 
projectors, manifestors, or reflectors, they're going to be taking in your frustrated energy. It's going to bring the whole energy down if you're not being correct. So it goes on and it goes on. And incorrectness leads to more incorrectness, leads to more friction, leads to more uh, resistance in the life. And it leads to a very unhappy life. So by you responding and taking responsibility for your response, you may have to say no to some, to someone who's really, really wants you to do something. You've got to go, well, no. And you've got to be firm with it because that's your truth. No matter what they may want, we're not here to have to obey outside forces all the time. A lot of people have things they have to do in their life, me included. So the things that I have to do, I allow space for. I put them in my schedule. I know that I'm approaching them. I try to get to a point in my life where I do what I what I respond to do. And the things that I have to do, I wait until I respond to do them. Then it's fine. Then it's much, much easier. If you know you've got things to do, you've got them in your calendar, you can wait for the response to be able to do them without having time so short that you have to. And you have to go against your own nature because you've left it too late, because it is something that has to be done. So again, being kind to yourself, understanding that you're here to respond, understanding that you can't live in a frenetic environment for an extended amount of time without becoming very disturbed and out of touch with your own nature. Another tip I can give generators is to understand that you have this life force that needs to be used. You need to use all of your energy every day. You got to use it. If you don't use it, it stagnates and frustration comes from it. And I don't care what it is that you're responding to doing, but to physically do something, to move the body, changes everything. It's very important if there's not enough movement in the life, there's going to be more frustration. The life force is going to be dampened down if it's not in movement, if it's not being used. And the using of it leads to more using of it, which leads to a happier life, a more productive life. So think about that. Okay, well, I hope I've uh, given you a few tips and explored things that could be useful for you. If you've enjoyed this, please like and share and subscribe. And I will back again very soon with something completely different. Bye for now.